What's up guys and welcome back to the channel, I'm Andy the Middle Age Gamer and this is the Crytac Chris Vector Gas Blowback SMG Review. Now grab a drink and sit back because this is going to be an absolute shocker. So with that let's jump into the usual disclosure slash disclaimers. Now this is going to be aimed at the person manually reviewing this video for YouTube as pretty much most of my videos now are getting limited for no apparent reason. This is an airsoft toy. This is not a real firearm. There are no real firearms in this video or in any of my videos. This video was filmed in a safe and secure private location with no other risk to other persons or property. And this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This airsoft product was bought by myself, so you guys don't have to. Now with that, let's get into it. Okay, so let's start with who are Chris. Chris are a unique small arms manufacturer based out in the United States of America. The main claim to fame is the actual Vector itself and their its unique recoiling system. Now, Crytac are a subsidiary of Chris and their main claim to fame is the AEG version of this, now to be the gas blowback, along with basically other AEGs like the Poseidon, etc. They're generally considered as a mid to high end AEG manufacturer, although I would actually question that. Now, what is the actual Chris Vector? Well, as you can see, it is a unique SMG slash PDW and has a unique recoiling system. Of course, it was first debuted at SHOT Show in 2006 as a prototype, a proof of concept, and then in 2009, the Gen 1 was released to the public. The Gen 1 would feature a light module up here at the front for a surefire light and also the fire and safety lever would be a hundred degree throw. Pretty much everything else stayed the same over the years. Now of course the Gen 2 would come out in 2016, the version you see here on the table and I believe as a recording this video we now have a Gen 3 which was again announced at SHOT Show this year 2024. Now Let's do what we always do. Let's jump in and let's start at the rear and work our way forward. Okay, so starting here at the rear, we do have the predominantly polymer folding stock. It does have a hard polymer butt pad here, which is nicely serrated. It will, I would say, give you a good grip in your shoulder. Of course, this butt pad is adjustable for its length of pull by adjusting four grub screws, two on either side. You do basically have from about here to here worth of actual adjustment. It's not very much, it's about one and a half inches. To be honest though, with the style of this stock and this, I would say SMG for airsoft, you're basically gonna need it up close to your body anyway. So you really won't be adjusting it, but if you do, it's there. Now, of course, like I say, you do have the Chris logo here embossed in. And on the top, you do have the Vector logo embossed on the top right here. This is a folding stock. As I say, you do have a button here. You can push in, fold round. It's completely up to you. Folding stocks are not bump stocks to the person who uh, manually reviews this. So don't confuse that like you have done in the past. Now, if we look on the side right there, that's where it would lock to when you fold it. Of course, as you can see, it is held on by a pin and it is fully compatible with any of the Chris Vector stocks on the market, which are great. If you want to put a buffer tube or you want other things, you can do whatever you want to make it comfortable for you. As you can see underneath, we do have our metal sling loop here, screwed in it, bolted in place. All the parts are replaceable. That's another good thing about the stock. It's perfectly fine and adds to the look of the Chris Vector. Now, moving forward, we do have the AR-15 style grip. It really does feel like a modernized, I would say civilian AR grip. It's very nice and comfortable. You do have this grip mounted to the upper receiver rather than the lower here. Unique design of this system. And as you can see, you do have this nice, I would say, securing bar here to give it more rigidity. It doesn't bend or flex, which is really good. Underneath, you do have this little compartment, which as you can see, has the Vector logo. You'll find that is gonna become a, a running theme on this. As we take it off, there's a little Allen key there to adjust your hop. It's nice to have it in there. Great idea. 
But as you'll see, it's like everything, a very poor execution. Now, moving up, you do have a very large trigger guard here, which is awesome. It does give you plenty of access for wearing your airsoft gloves with armor plates on and easy access to the trigger. Now, if we drop that, you'll find that the trigger is about one mil there to the wall. There's two mil uh, pull and then a break and a one mil over travel. So a total of four millimeters and around about four and a half pound of pull required. Now, if we reset, as you can hear, you got a nice tactile reset. It's about three millimeters to the full reset and you still have another millimeter of extra travel if you want to let go completely or you can just pull back into firing, which is fine, just like that. But as you can see, there's another one of the problems coming and we'll get to that very, very soon. Now here you do have your 45 degree fire and safe. As you can see, again, they show you a nice little red, um, little, how to say, bullet picture with a V in it. Like they really do love advertising themselves. You can flip that up, it's safe, flip down, and we're now in fire. Across, we do have your mold select, and thanks to Grantham, you have semi, medium semi, or double semi, and we have very fast semi. Okay, very simple. These two are ambidextrous, as you can see. Now, moving down, here we do have, as you can see, on the, I would say, recoil unit part of it, which is right here. You have the lovely V, you have your official Crytac, officially licensed product, which is actually part of the receiver itself, it's embossed inside, and you do have your unique serial number right there. Yes, they are completely unique. Your pins for takedown are here, here, and here. You can pop them to separate the upper and lower. You'll be doing that quite a lot. Okay, to release the vector system, you can do the spring by just these two, or when you get it apart, you take this one out later. Okay, I will do that off camera, so you'll be able to see it later disassembled. Now, moving across, you have your magazine well. It's not flared, but it is quite nice. This is designed to fit the 45 ACP style of mags, but not the real steel ones, okay? This is your magazine release. It's really decent and many people will hold their hand here. I've done it. I've never dropped my mag. The wall here is quite high and the spring to push is really stiff. So I wouldn't expect you to accidentally drop it by holding it. But just in case, as you can see, I've mounted a lower, how would say, front of foregrip right here to the lower rail. Now, let's have a look at the magazines. We'll just put that down for now. Now, again, YouTube, this is a large gas tank. There is no large capacity magazine. It's not real. It's just designed to look that way, but it is not a real magazine, okay? Now, of course, your gas fills right there and your knocker valve for releasing the gas is right there. As you can see, you do have the nice round counts there and you do have the official markings right there. Patent pending, mag X. 245 Chris, which is quite nice to keep it. And as you can see, that's where all your little BBs will be able to fit. And we'll get into why this is great size, very lightweight. In fact, one of these weighs the same as a standard VFC HK45 magazine. And yet this is like three or four times bigger than that. Go figure. Um, it's really lightweight, made of aluminum all the way down on the inside. This is just a plastic cover on the outside. Um, but yeah, it's a nice gas tank, does the job. We'll get back to that. Now, here you do have your bolt hold open and release. This is a steel hold open and release. It's in a great place, so if you charge the gun, you can hold it to the rear, you can lock the bolt with your thumb. It's really designed very well for that. And you can drop just like that. And as you can see, you can hear the hammer drop. Now, the charging handle is unique. It is a solid uh, piece of aluminum, although partly cast as well. So that's nice. You can see the seam lines there where it was cast together, but it does have a unique function. On the real steel one, you would just pull it into its charging mode, so it's horizontal. And in doing so, you can see here that it pulls the bolt back. On the real one, that's so that you could easily, 
as you can see, it's so easy to jam the bolt up and let it go. But it's basically there so that, how would you say, you can do a press check and go, oh look, there's a round in and let go. Even though we both know that this is airsoft, so you can't really see the BB due to the nozzle system and that. But it's nice to have it and, re how would you say, replicate that muscle memory. But as you can see, it's so easy to jam this bolt right up. Now, let's move on. As you can see, you do have two screw holes here. That's for the single play piece of Picatinny that comes. You can either put it on the left or the right. You can order more and fit more if you wish. You wouldn't want to here, because as you can see, you've got your charging handle and you're just going to rip your knuckles to pieces like a cheese grater. So yeah, it's pointless it being there. And I put mine on the other side, which we'll get to. Now, along the top, you do have a monolithic metal top rail. That little hole there is where you would put the Allen key to adjust your hop. And out the box, this does come with front and rear flip up sights. Now these are actually based off the Chris and do feature the Chris logos. And as you can see, the rear one has two apertures, one for close range, one for further out. And you also have the windage knob right on the side to adjust for the windage. At the front, it is a, how to say, elevation adjust, which is really good. So that's kind of cool, I guess. Now, to complete the uh, Chris, you do have the Chris logo there, and on the front you do have the vector, just in case the person you're pointing this at doesn't know what you've got. Now, here at the front, you can see we do have a threaded flash hider. As you can see, mine's been savagely scraped to pieces to try and get it off, because here in the UK, they decided to put a full bottle of thread lock on there, and not just the easy stuff, but the really tight stuff. Now, of course, why? Well, that's Crytek for you. They basically don't know what they're doing anyway. Now, with that, let's flip it around. Let's take a look at the other side. As you can see, the markings are mirrored with Chris here. And like I say, there's your full metal Picatinny rail for fixing a light if you wish. But you will really need a foregrip with the paddle, I would say, or pressure pad insert on it so that you can use that as the other side. You're just gonna break it in seconds. It's ridiculous. Now, as you can see, the main fire controls are ambidextrous but everything else like the bolt hold open the charging handle is only on the left side of the gun it's not for left hand shooters the only other markings here as you can see tells you manufactured in taiwan by crytek because that's where they are based and you do have the vector logo on the side again just to let you know if you didn't know already now now we've gone over the overview let's go see how she shoots Okay, I'm using 0.25 gram BBs and red gas. So, what does that give us an average? An average of 289.9 feet per second, well within the CQB limit. Awesome. Okay, so let's step it back to 10 to 15 meters and let's see what the grouping size is. Right, a couple of those flyers, your main group's here, but I did drop two with the flyers, so, ooh. Okay, let's check the Tessa star. Let's see what she's like. Okay. So if we slow it down, great. Okay guys, as you can see, we do have a nice tight center group of around two and a half to three and a half inches, but we did have a couple of flyers. It really does seem to be um, a common normality on this that um, every 
six, seven shots, you might see a flyer here and there. Sometimes it could be a few inches out, sometimes it could be a few, few feet out. Just something to bear in mind, but that comes down to the uh, fabled TDC hop that they decided to put in here. But we'll get into that right away, actually. Let's yeet that out the way. Okay, so we'll start in, as always, with the lower receiver. This is absolutely heavy. This is like twice the weight of the entire upper stock and optic on there. It is nice. Everything from here all the way forward on the inside is complete metal skeleton with all your metal pins, i.e. steel pins and so on. As you can see, you have a steel um, firing pin release seer there and the actual hammer is basically steel and polymer, which is quite nice. It does its job and it works. Now, you do have full zinc rails in there but these are not polished rails by any chance these are not even properly fitted rails let's put it that way um now let's show you as i said before your bolt release is steel and the pins are steel underneath all the screws are steel the charging handle is cast aluminum as you can tell this nice silver shining through and you can see the seam line there and like i say it does the uh nice Simple movement. Now, this is your TDC hop. Now, one thing about this hop is when it came to me, it was shooting down to the floor. So I decided to add a couple of clicks. So I added three clicks of up and suddenly I'm shooting the ISS. And then I reduce it one and now at, with just one click off from going straight up, you are now shooting straight for the first 15 to 20, but you do see a slight little drop off. And yeah, this is Crytac with their TDC style of hop, and to be honest, I think they just did a rush job. Kind of like what they've done with a lot of the internals on this. So let's discuss at the end with that, but let's show you the good stuff. You've got your two hex screws here. These are for releasing your barrel, so you can take out the booking and inner barrel and all the rest easily enough and repair it, or, or repair it and uh, replace it, no problem. Make it out of this. I'll get to that when we do the discussion, but yeah. All this is, like I say, zinc, aluminum, and steel. So no qualms there. It's very well built in that respect, except for the rails are just, yeah, we'll get to that. Now, of course, the main problem is how they decided to make it work. Now, rather than do a pistol blowback, which has been done, and they've done before with the Maxim 9, they've decided to go with a miniaturized rifle design. So... As you can see here, you have a rifle piston head and a rifle style nozzle, but miniaturized. You really do only have that much volume and that's it. Not really enough mass or volume to cycle this thing correctly for the size of the bolt. Again, it would have been better to use a pistol style. It just would have been better or at least ran it a little bit better. Maybe the O-ring, instead of being such a high density, I would say rubber, very very strong and rigid they could have just used a more european and american and how would say cool weather friendly piston head but instead they went with what they did now as you can see if i can get this to focus for you you do have a little screw there it's one equally on both sides so not to worry and that's how you would allow it to go forward along with an e-clip here on the rear as you can see, these two little recessed dents are for your rollers. Now, your rear rollers feel very grindy when you hold them. They are not loose. I had to use a lot of lube there. That super lube that was recommended by Bada Bing to me. And as you can see, they are just held in place with generic bog standard friction. Now, that wouldn't be so bad. Well, it would with the way that it's done if they'd have converted them to bearings, proper bearing rollers and used screws like this flat flush fit with the bearings so that it could slide in and out properly. We airsofters don't care too much about realism we can't see. If it runs and it shoots great and you get a great impulse and a great feeling, that's all that matters to us as long as it's accurate and so on. But instead they said, no, we'll give you a steel bolt carrier group with steel bearings and we're gonna give you a steel pin at the back. Everything steel so that basically this thing cools down ice cold by the time you've gone through six or seven shots. It's very, very cold. 
And in doing so, it now only goes about a centimeter back before the friction in the rails that we already talked about and the lack of volume behind there. The piston head is now frozen solid at this point. So you get about a centimeter of travel, not enough to set reset all the equipment and allow it to fire or function correctly. You get double feeds, jams, the lot, and a dead trigger. So, yeah. Nice that they did put the markings on there, 45A2 for the Gen 2. But yes, the other point, and I'm going to say a huge thank you to Explosive Enterprises and their video for this, but basically, when I got this, these, these rails here, the recoil system, the rollers would be sliding up and down on the top on this, whereas on the real steel, there would be tracks cut into the plates here that could be correctly tuned, and it's quite simple. Now, these can be replaced. They don't sell them separately. Okay, at the moment, there are none available anywhere, none to be sold separately. But you can, there's just three screws holding each plate in. And basically these were all painted after about three to 500 rounds. That's when all the problems started to happen as this paint was coming off, which acts like a lubricant to it and allowed it to smoothly roll. And then you suddenly exposed the, how to say, excess material from the really cheap crap steel plates that they used. They didn't use high quality steel. How do I know this? Well, as you can just make out right there, you've got dints on here and they were already in this through the manufacturing and the excess. And of course, it's just getting beaten up. Now, if this was supposed to be steel and you would have thought it's gonna get a hammer in from that recoil system of the bolt slamming backwards, you should have had this done correctly, right? But again, we'd be wrong. This is Crytac rushing it out the door. And basically, yeah, those basically had lots of pits and holes in there. It looked like a British road. And at the end of the day, it's too much friction. And friction in a system that's unique and brand new is not your bedfellow, you know? It's not your good friend, it's your enemy. Now, one thing I will say I wouldn't do that Explosive Enterprise recommended was to trim down the upper buffer here by about two to three millimeters. You don't need to because, again, the more that this goes down, the further back that the bolt can go, and at that point, it will get hung up on the firing pin. Um, so that little um, lever for the firing pin will be allowed to go forward. As you can see on mine, I've had to flat spot this thing. If we can get this to focus again. Right, I had to flat spot mine here just so that it had an angle to reset it just in case it did go further back. Now, of course, I've been running this on red gas because it seems to light the red gas a little bit more than the standard green gas, especially in the cooler climates. So that's perfectly fine. But oh boy, has this been an absolute cluster. Now, when we talk about the top, as we're going to now, we have your hammer right here. And this reminds me of the Laugo Alien pistol. You've got your hammer at the top. It is steel, which is great. And so are all the bits inside, etc. All this stuff here is steel. Now, you do have all your correct lever levers in there. And as you can see, you have this weird system. Now this, in order to make the hammer drop, is your safety in here. If the rails are not up completely and pushing that forward, when you pull the trigger, the hammer won't fall. So you have to basically, let's put it on fire. You have to have five hands for this to override it. But once you do, you can see there, the hammer goes forward and you can see the clockwork system right here as it gets in and it will move itself all the way through, okay? It's a unique system, really crazy. Um, it works when it works until it doesn't, sadly, isn't that the truth? Now, of course, there is a full aluminum chassis unit in there for removing. You will have to take the rail and everything else off, but you can remove the fire control unit. It does allow you to do that and repair it for maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. Now, before we rip this apart, literally, um, let's get this put back together off camera and let's discuss. Okay, if you've gotten this far in the video and you like what you see but you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit the notification bell so you don't miss another video and you get to see a load of cool, how to say, airsoft products. And hit that like button, that way YouTube will push the video to other airsofters. We need to get this video in as many hands as possible that are potentially wanting to have a Crytac Chris Vector gas blowback so that they don't make the mistake I did. So I bought this so you don't have to. Now, with that being said, 
let's get into our, I would say, discussion. Now, what do I think about it? Well, it's quite simple. The Crytek Chris Vector gas blowback I've been wanting for 10 years, ever since KWA released their, I would say, original. Now, sadly, after the first batch, it was stopped and the second batch was converted into parts, basically to try and keep the first batch going due to Chris and Crytek suing the hell out of them. Now, you know, um, it's a case of, right, I want one, but we can't do anything, so we wait. Then Crytek came out with the AEG. I was about to pay another £100 more than what the gas blowback is for it, but as I had a good chance to have a good play with one, it turns out that the internals are no better than a Raider S from G&G. &G. Uh, basically, you can double tap, triple tap the trigger, and you can actually bind the gears very easily. And for a £550 AEG, no, I'm sorry. Great externals, very crap internals. And it seems to be an ongoing theme. Now, with the gas blowback, it seems that Crytek have gone the old company ways. Rather than get people like myself, Bada Bing, Ollie, or Explosive Enterprises, people that are not affiliated with a retailer, but that have access to large communities like yourselves, we should be able to test this for them. They could have, eight months prior to going into full production, sent out a load of prototypes across the world using their, how to say, dealers and representatives across there to get them into the hands of us, or into our hands. And let us put it in the actual climates it's going to be used for the majority, because believe it or not, the majority of airsofters are actually in Europe and North America, not just in Asia, as you would say. And of course, we have cooler, lower pressures, etc. So it should have been. They never did. And of course, by the time it did, they sent it out to people like Patrol Base, Land Warrior. Or you can look at America. It was EVIC that actually announced it. And they made money on their YouTube channel, which is against YouTube policies, by the way. You cannot promote the sales of firearms. Rule number one. And two... They announced it to us. I got my pre-order in the same. It was like all excited and so on. They sold out the first batch completely and the second batch, to be honest with you. And it were at this point now where, like I say, that was their plan, but they should have put it in our hands prior and we could have found all these issues and they could have fixed it so that the product that you guys get may have been 50, 60 pounds more expensive with a few changes here and there. But come on, guys, let me know in the comments down below. Would you rather have paid 470 and get this broken mess of a gun? Or would you rather have paid 500 to 550 the same price as the AEG, and had a working, amazing SMG to field in your local site? It's entirely up to you. But what would you guys do? I know for me, I think we do need to change these big companies and say, hey, you know, Screw the small retailers out there that are just going to market it as a positive and do great reviews and lie to you guys because they never test it. You can see on here the wear and tear of over 7,000 rounds, the paint coming off the charging handle, etc. I've put enough rounds, enough sleepless nights trying to get this to work. It's really unfair, you know, and it shouldn't be that way. We shouldn't be having to do this. But I wouldn't mind doing this if I didn't get pay, have to pay for it. And they said, hey, here's a, a, a prototype, test it, send it us back when, it, when you've done your work. And we can make a better job. You know, it's common sense, right? Something so important like this that many thousands of airsofters have been waiting for. Yeah, it's funky. And yeah, we can all say, oh, we don't like it. But secretly we do. Um, we can do all that. But for me, it really hurts. I've waited 10 years and it looks like I'm going to have to wait another 10 years for another company to do it or for Crytek to do a Gen 3 version of it or a Gen, you know, a version 2, version 3, etc. It's ridiculous. Do we all remember VSC when they did their Gen 1s? Like the MP5. You had a very rattly, not very good bolt carrier assembly in there. What happened? You contact VSC. I know I've done it myself. They answer every single time I send them a message. Crytek have had a month of me asking for help and not one reply. Now, speaking of that little sticker on the other side, inside the manual, if you break that sticker, you can't go back to your retail. You have to go to the dealer, they say. You contact the dealer, which here in the UK is officially Land Warrior, I believe. Um, but you contact them and they don't know anything about it and say contact Crytek. And when you try to contact Crytek, they don't answer you. 
So yeah, once you broke that little sticker, you can't send it back to the person you bought it from. You're basically screwed and that's not a very good promise. It's already telling you, but yet in the manual, it tells you to lube it, to open it up and to do it, you're gonna need to break the sticker. So yeah, as stupid as it sounds, that is exactly the problem. So please, if you've got one on pre-order right now, when you're watching this video, cancel it. Save your money, wait for them to do a version two or a version three down the line where they might have fixed some of the problems. Let us buy it so that you don't have to and you can find out whether it's good or not. I'm sorry this has taken so long, but I got let down with mine. I originally pre-ordered it with a UK reputable dealer and they basically turned around and said, oh, they've been let down and twice in a row I've been let down by them now. And so I ended up having to go to fire support to get mine. And they're a very good dealer. They really are. It's not their fault that this is broke. This is Crytac. This is just plain and simple Crytac, not caring about the actual shooter, rushing a product out there just because they can and getting a quick, I would say, bang for the buck, as you would say. And, you know, I, I don't appreciate that. You guys are more important to me than you know, watching you guys waste all this money on it. It's not worth it. Let's let's start teaching companies like this a lesson. Let's stop buying their products for now and let's let them see this video, you know? Send it to them if you can. Let them hear it, let them see it, and hopefully they want to finally get in contact for me after a month of emailing them. It'd be nice, you know? Maybe then they can actually fix the problem that they've got right now instead of keep rushing out more units and not actually having good working parts inside let's say so we get to that point in the video i'd love to know what you guys would think and if there's anything i missed let me know in the comments down below i'd love to hear from you guys i've been the middle-aged gamer you guys have been absolutely amazing and i will see you in the next one